Those consequences cause no discomfort or pain. A consequence should be something that causes them enough grief that they want to avoid it in the future. The reason these heavy-handed consequences don't work for kids has to do with the reason we're giving a consequence at all. So most of us are giving a consequence because our kid has done something like fail a math test, run away at the park, shove their sibling, and we don't want them to do that again. Our friend Matt here is thinking, what can I do that is scary enough and bad enough that they'll remember next time, oh, that was so terrible. I never want them to have that to happen again. What that misses though is an account of how children learn. Why am I so concerned with learning? Because if my kid has failed a test, shoved their sister or run away from me at the park, I want them to learn a different way. Learning happens inside of relationships. So if you go to scare a child by doing something so awful that they're gonna remember, they're never gonna do that again, you're gonna do two things. One, you're gonna push your child into the part of the brain, the base of the brain and limbic system that is reactive and that at its most basic level, functions to keep the child safe. So think about like, there's a bear chasing you and you're running and you're gonna grab your kid and run up a tree. You're not thinking, oh, now I'm gonna pick that tree over there because the branches are more stable. Blah, blah, blah. You're just like, oh my God, get me away from this animal that's gonna eat me and my child. Okay, that same part of the brain is gonna be activated when you break the connection by doling out a harsh, heavy-handed consequence meant for your child to remember to never do this again. In order for them to do the processing, like remembering to never do this again, they have to have access to the part of the brain where language lives, and that's the prefrontal cortex. So when you go for that kind of heavy-handed approach, your child isn't gonna process the language. You know what they will process? They will process your tone, they will process your anger, because the, that, that they're gonna be able to feel. Okay, you are yelling and that's what they're going to be left with. Now, you haven't taught them another thing, so don't expect that when you go to the park, they're gonna stay with you. In order for them to learn that, you've got to stay connected. So if my kid ran away from me at the park, I would say, oh, you know what? Too tricky for the park today. Come on, let's go home. We'll go do something at home. We can try again tomorrow. And then I would think, what do we need here? Do we need to go to gated parks? Do I need to prime my child? Does my kid need a social story? Do I need to get closer? Do I need to pay more attention to my child when they're playing instead of talking to the other parents? I don't know what your child needs. It's gonna be particular to them. This is also true if you have a child who's shoving their sister or brother, okay? If I go for heavy handed, don't ever do that again, all I'm gonna get is shut down and scared and it might even look like compliance. It might look like they stop hitting their sibling and it might work for a second, but you haven't taught them anything new and you haven't stayed in relationships. So over time, this is much more likely to make it worse. So if your child shoves their sibling, A, of course you need to interrupt it and the one who did the shoving needs to go get an ice pack and you may need to transition to a different kind of big motor activity. But I also know that now is my time that I have to be proactive. You have to teach your children how to play. And you do that by giving them a positive opposite that is not about shoving. If they were shoving because the other kid had a toy, I need to teach them that you always ask for things with palm up. If they were shoving because the other kid said something mean, I need to teach them what they can say and also that you can come get a grown up for help, okay? Um, it's the same with a math test. If my kid fails a math test and I ground them and I give them a bad consequence and I take the TV away or the car or whatever, yeah, they might get an A on their next test, but it's probably not because they studied. It's probably because they learned how to cheat, right? And so you are gonna say, wow, you did it, and they're gonna get reinforced for cheating, but you haven't taught them anything about how to study, how to ask for help, what to do about the math, how to get a tutor if you need one, how to ask the teacher for help, none of that. And so they may cheat on a couple of tests, but pretty soon they're probably gonna fail another one. And did you really want them to ace a test by cheating? Like I just, you guys, if you want your children to cooperate with you, you have to cooperate with them. They're, they are whole beings and quashing their spirits, squashing them until they understand that like never do this again. You gotta experience pain. Pain does not enable learning. A felt sense of safety enables learning. 
That does not mean that you don't have to have parameters around how you go. In fact, parameters around how to show up is the thing that is going to enable your child to thrive. Or it's one of the things. If you need help figuring out how to get your child to cooperate without these horrible, mean, quash them, send them to their room, take the TV and the car, and I don't know what other kinds of consequences, I can't even think of what they would be because I never do these kinds of consequences because they're not brain and nervous system aligned. They're also not aligned with the sacred relationship that I have with my child. If you need help figuring out how to get your kiddo to cooperate, whether it's running away at the car, par, running away at the park, or failing a math test, or shoving between siblings, and you don't want to quash your child's spirit with these kinds of, um, they're they're not really consequences, they're punishments. Um, go to the link in my bio and book a call with me and my team. And if our program is a fit for you, I will personally walk beside you until we figure this out. You can all do it. All of your children can cooperate. All of you have everything it takes to parent this way. And honestly, you are the absolute best person to be parenting your particular child. You have what it takes. Link in bio if you need a little more help. Our team and you can talk. We can figure out if it's the right thing. If it is, I'm on your team.